action, no peace. That's right. And what that means is until you act, we will show up and stand up and speak out. And that's what you all are doing. And don't doubt for a second that the reason they're talking about gun legislation right now is because you are here today, you were here yesterday, you were here Monday, and you'll be back here again. Keep showing up, standing up, and speaking out. And we will be with you. Well, this is a very special day. We, we, we talked to a lot of very interesting and, and, and entertaining and just all around great people. But uh, every so often, we get to speak with someone who's making not just waves, but a difference uh, in the world. And uh, I'm proud to say that in my community, I have someone that's doing that. Uh, her name is Gloria Johnson. She's a representative of District 90 here in Knoxville, Tennessee, where our show is is based. I'm proud to be in her district. And she's here with us. You probably have heard about her recently, if no matter where you're listening to this from or watching this, because she, along with two other representatives here in Tennessee, have made national news standing up for what is right in Nashville. Uh, they've been known as the Tennessee Three, along with Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. Uh, a lot has gone down over the last few weeks. And like I said, it's been it's been a tide turner for sure. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, Representative Johnson, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's uh, something we got to talk about. So, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, let's just get started. How, how are things going right now? Like just, just, just like today. Like how are how are how is the vibe in Nashville? How are things going right now? Well, I mean, the vibe is great because there are people all over Nashville that care deeply about the issue of gun violence, and are clearly committed to fighting it because they're showing up at the Capitol every single day, different groups of people. Uh, yesterday, we had Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, William Barber here with pastors from all over the country. And it was just fabulous to hear them talk about keeping the focus on doing something about gun violence in Tennessee, but also nationally as well. We've had folks representative from Kentucky since the recent bank shooting that they've reached out to us wanting to collaborate, want to just share ideas. There's just been a huge community that is growing, that is showing up. And then since last Thursday, we've had Republicans for gun reform showing up, showing up in committees with signs and holding their signs throughout the whole committee. Wow. It's it's really, really something. But the young people are really driving this. They're passionate. They're smart. They're organized. And then today we had a group of musicians come to speak to the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the Senate and to the governor and bring them a letter about gun reform. And I know that I'm not sure who all was with them, but I know that Cheryl Crow was there, Margot Price and Allison Russell. So I, I actually ran into them as I was getting on the elevator and they were headed to um, the speaker's office. So, yeah, I mean, everybody is involved. And then today at five, I know they're doing this in Knoxville, but here in Nashville, they're doing a human chain from uh, Vanderbilt Hospital to uh, to the Capitol. And so I'll be a part of that this afternoon as well. That's amazing. That's amazing because, you know, and this is and this is a testament to how times have changed and how I think social media helps with this. You are you were a part of a shooting in a school in mm -hmm. 2008 at Central High here in Knoxville. Country singer Kelsey Ballerini was also there. She was a student at the time. Uh, and what's interesting is that until all of this came up, you know, with the Nashville shooting and everything, I had forgotten about that. Because I don't feel like it got the press that it deserved in 2008 compared to today when we have so much more, we're so more invested in what's going on in the world and social media, like I said, is helping in that. What do you say to that, that the difference between these years, that it's so different? It, it, it is. It's different, but it's also it was a different kind of a situation. It wasn't where somebody came from outside the school and came in and it was a student within the school who shot another student. Still horrible gun violence and still had a traumatic effect on everyone there that day and, and families and all of that. So, um, but it was just a little bit different 
And it wasn't what is considered a mass shooting, of course, because only one child was shot and killed, Ryan McDonald. But um, it's just another example of how that the current generation has grown up with the possibility of, of gun violence in their schools. That's not something I had to worry about when I was in school. Me neither. Yeah, me neither. I mean, when I was in the fourth grade, that's when Columbine happened. But it, yeah. it, it felt like it was just so far off from mm-hmm. from us. And it just seemed like such a freak thing. You never would have thought that this would have been the new normal uh, within, right. within 20 years. This would be the life that we would live. And it's just it it boggles one's mind to think that we have we've gone down this path so, so horribly. It's just, it, it, it's, in, it's incredible. But what you guys are doing is, 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 is amazing that because it it, 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 it takes a crowd. It takes a village yeah. to convince people to do this, to, to step in and make this happen, right. make things better. You know, the, the owner of the Tennessee holler had his home shot recently. Uh, you know, it's just, it's, because it's not just mass shootings, it's it's guns in general. It's people people say that mental health is the problem or or people are the problem, but you know, normal people will shoot somebody they disagree with. Just recently there was a young man who was shot because he went to the wrong house. It's right. it's it, there's it, no, there's no other country in the world. Mm-hmm. that has the problem we have. It's very clear what the problem is. Yeah. Um, every other country has mental health issues. They have video games. They have all of the same things. What is different in this country? We are the only country with this much gun violence, and we are the only country that, well, and certainly in Tennessee, we have laws that proliferate guns, mm-hmm. and and that's what we're doing. Yeah. And we need to be more responsible. We can respect the Second Amendment while still having co- have common sense gun um, legislation. We just saw a poll, statewide Tennessee poll, that showed overwhelmingly both sides of the aisle want red flag laws. People want common sense gun legislation. I polled this in my district the last race. I've run a red flag law the last two sessions uh, in the 111th and 112th General Assemblies. And 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 in my district, and now we know across Tennessee, Republicans, independents, and Democrats favor red flag laws, safe storage laws, those types of laws. And and it's about time. Uh, but then you think about some of our our national representatives, uh, most notably, because you you have made national news as a state representative. Well, uh, this region's uh, national representative, Tim Burchett, also made national news with his comments about uh, guns and what needs to be done. We're not going to fix it. Criminals are going to be criminals. And my daddy fought in the Second World War, fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese. And he told me, he said, buddy. He said, if somebody wants to take you out and doesn't mind losing their life, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. What are your thoughts on what he said? And are you are you at odds with his message? Well, the, the thing that I remember uh, Congressman Burchett saying was, we're not going to do anything. I guess that was honest. That's That was his but thought. But it's not mm-hmm. right. Right. But it's absolutely not right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, there's definitely uh, time for a change there. Um, yes. Do you think that people like Representative Burchett because you know during all of that they were playing a video of him talking about ah we're 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 taking down drag that was that's the big focus we're taking down the drag shows. A grown man dressed up like a woman should not be rubbing his crotch in front of a little child. Right. That is ridiculous. Good on Governor Bill Lee and our Tennessee legislature. And then it it. And then they compared it to his "we're not going to do anything about it" comment with, with with the gun reform. Do you think he can be? Right. Swayed? Do you think people like him can be swayed, or is it just too late? Here's the thing: I don't know if he can be swayed. Um, you know, I've known Tim Burchett since high school. Wow, gotten along with him just fine. Um, have we both share good friends? And uh, it's interesting to me. Certainly, he certainly. Um, turned a corner since he's gotten in Congress to be an extremist. And that's, that's unfortunate, but I can tell you this. I don't know if he's going to change at all, but his district is changing 
Mm-hmm. And there's no question about that. If he doesn't understand, um, yes, there's some loud, there's a loud few that want guns over everywhere all the time, but they are a loud few. And you see in the polling that more and more people want common sense gun legislation. I'm a gun owner. I've taken the safety course for owning a gun. I shoot regularly. If I have a gun, I want to know how to use it, be comfortable with it, know how to store it, all of those things. It was my father's service revolver, and I want to keep it. And so if I'm going to have that gun, I have to be responsible. And and that's that's the only way to be. And that's that's the scary thing is that they're advocating anyone can have guns. The the NRA convention just happened, and I think it was that the governor of South Dakota was talking about how her tiny grandchild already has a gun ready for her. Like a year old. Yeah. Little Miss Addie, who is almost two, and Branch, who's just a few months old, they have brought us so much joy. They brought us purpose. Now, Addie, who, you know, soon will need them, I want to reassure you, she already has a shotgun and she already has a rifle. It just, it, it, it blows my mind, these these types of reactions and, and, thought, and the thought process of how guns work. Do, do you think that children, here's a good question, because people are worried, uh, people on the right are worried about drag influencing children and grooming them. Do you think people of NRA stature are grooming children into being gun owners and, and being obsessed with firearms. They absolutely are, but I think it's going to backfire on them Mm -hmm. because I think when kids are in school doing these drills and being afraid when there's a school shooting in their community or in their state, um, you know, kids are pretty darn smart and they're pretty genuine. And I think a lot of what they're doing is going to backfire by trying to groom these kids. It's going to make the kids resent them. And and my hope is that kids, as I know, kids are smart and they can tell when someone's being real and genuine with them. And and I'm going to trust them to do the right thing. It's it's really up to the future generations. That's basically what it is. So that's why it's so important to stand with these young voices like Rep Pearson and Rep Jones because they are the voice of this next generation. They're brilliant. They're passionate. They're great speakers. They can really hone in on the importance of an issue. And I just want to do everything I can to lift those voices because their voices are critical, especially at this time in Tennessee in the legislature. And we have to protect them and keep them and elect others like them. Absolutely. Which leads to the question, do, do you share in this optimism that the tides are turning and progressivism will prevail in the end? We talk about this a lot, me and the Justins, and we talk about, you know, it's not a moment, it's a movement. We can feel that building and just feel this sort of um, resurrection of this movement and um, just see the young people gravitating towards it. It's it's powerful. It's important. W- you know, we sometimes feel like it's it's really well beyond all of us. Um, just little things like running into Joan Baez in the airport. That was incredible. And, you know, somebody who is an activist from the 60s mm-hmm. who knows about movements and knows about building them. And just like that meeting, we, you know, I've wanted to meet her all my life and <laughs> she was wanting to meet the Tennessee Three and it just right. happened in, a, in an airport. It was fascinating. And um, just some of the things that seem to have meshed and come together to help build this and continue it when, and, the vice president came to Nashville the day after the expulsion. She cleared her calendar and came down to Nashville. And we had a discussion about building movements and bringing in new partners and broadening and growing the movement. They chose to show courage in the face of an extreme tragedy. They chose to lead and show courage to say that a democracy allows for places where the people's voice will be heard and honored and respected. 
And that's what we're absolutely going to do. And we've got a, a lot of help here in the state and nationally. So hopefully we can get some serious action on gun violence. Absolutely. And and uh, speaking of which, I do want to ask, what was that like? Because you, you, you met her in person and you had a Zoom meeting with the president. What what was that like? How did, how did you feel <laughs> going through all of that? <laughs> that was wild. I mean, mm -hmm. I just... You know, never in my life did I expect. I mean, I figured we'd make the Nashville news because, right. you know, we were stepping outside of the normal rules mm -hmm. and speaking without permission is ultimately what we did. You know, that's the rule we, we broke, um, but just never expected it to catch fire like it did. But uh, grateful that it is bringing broad and wide attention to Tennessee and what's happening in our legislature as far as the shredding of democracy mm -hmm. and also, of course, to the gun issue so that perhaps with all of this pressure statewide and nationally, we can get something done for the people of Tennessee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, that is so true. And um, if, if you're if you're fine with I'm going to kind of skew away and talk about some other things here uh, when sure. it comes to our state. Uh, there was a 2018 study by the University of Washington that evaluated the health of each state's democracy and Tennessee mm -hmm. came in dead last. What are your yes. thoughts on that? Do, you, do your experiences of, as part of the minority party of our state, do they reflect that study's conclusion? I see that every day. Mm -hmm. um, I see it every day in the way they try to silence our vo voices, um, kill our bills, refuse to allow us to bring um, untimely untimely filed amendments like they do. In the House, we do most everything on a voice vote instead of a roll call vote. I don't know if you saw the Phil Williams interview with me and Representative Dixie, mm -hmm. where we talked about the many times that they allow Republicans to do things that they don't allow from Democrats. And it, they are slowly silencing the voices of the opposition. That's a scary thing. When you have a supermajority, you have absolute power. Yep. And as we've seen, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And um, we're seeing them trying to silence uh, our voices at every turn. They cut our mics. They've limited debate to just a few minutes. And then they've limited debate to five minutes. But if I ask a 30-second question, they can read the bill and take eat up the other four and a half minutes so mm -hmm. that that's the end of my time. Right. And that's what they're doing. They're sort of filibustering the rest of our time so that we can't ask more questions. Why are they so afraid of debate on the legislation they bring? That should be a question. Yeah. Also, when I came back in 2018, I went to freshman uh, orientation again, even though I was here before I came back, went to freshman orientation. And one of the things the Republican leader told us, William Lambert, he told us, oh, you don't want to engage with the media or there's certain certain people in the hallways you don't want to see. So you can use be sure you use the secret hallways. So there's hallways that only with our passes that we can get in, members can get in to use to get to the go in the back door of committees. I'm elected by the people of House District 90. And if I am avoiding to the press to talk about the things that I'm doing while up here in Nashville, I shouldn't be here. Mm. If I'm avoiding constituents or avoiding people who want to lobby on legislation um, and I'm afraid to talk to the press, I shouldn't be up here because the press is how the people in District 90 find out what we're doing up here. Right. And we should not be trying doing everything we can to avoid them using secret hallways so you don't have to answer to the press which means answering to the folks at home and so for us being in the super minority i want to talk to the press about my bill to bring paid family leave about my bill for safe gun storage and about my bill for a red flag law or to cap the caseloads for dcs i'll spend days debating my legislation because it's good for Tennessee families and the majority of Tennesseans want to see this legislation, but it's getting killed just for partisan politics and on a party line vote in subcommittees. It's an ongoing thing. And, th and that leads to my next question, you know, gerrymandering, it's out of control. Yeah. And 
what what do you think can be done about that? Well, something's getting ready to be done. <laughs> the lawsuit is the seventeenth of this month, and just in a day or two, I don't even know what day it is. Mm -hmm. um, the lawsuit, the gerrymandering lawsuit, the judge has already decided that the state's maps are unconstitutional. Wow. What what the what this court date is is they're supposed to be going in to uh, prove that, you know, the states can make their case that they're not unconstitutional. But the judge has already decided. And so uh, there's not much case for them to make. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens after the 17th. We'll be hearing what they've decided. And and from everything we've seen so far, it seems like they have ruled both the state house and the state senate maps unconstitutional. That is unbelievable, but I'm glad something after all this time is is being done about that because it, like I said, it, it is out of control. But both on a state and national level, it's just out of control. And so, yeah, it's you know, it's ridiculous. They've been after me for so long, and they literally just drew my block out of my district and drew me in to the only other Democrat in Knoxville's district. You know, mm -hmm. thinking that I would run against a rep McKenzie, which I'm not going to do. Right. And so I moved the six blocks or less than a mile back into my district that I've lived in for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So I could run for the seat that I've always run for. Right. So. Right. Um, turning now to, to women's issues, women's rights, yeah. uh, the, the, the abortion pill, um, mifepristone, mifepristone, if I'm saying that correctly, mm -hmm. it's, it's being banned. And the, the fact that Knoxville's own Planned Parenthood was burned down last year, what are your thoughts on the constant fight against rep reproduction rights? And and where is that going? Are we are we ever going to get back to because we talked about we do have hope that progressivism will prevail. But but where do we see women's rights going in this country? Well, women don't you know, women are second class citizens right now. Uh, we are not allowed equal rights currently because we do not have bodily autonomy. And so this is horrific for Tennessee and for the country when the Supreme Court decided that guns need to be regulated um, by the federal government or, you know, but, but, but abortion, it'll be up to the states. Right. We're gonna leave you women to the states. We're gonna protect these other things but we're going to let the states decide if women are equal citizens or not. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what the Supreme court said. And Tennessee said, absolutely. Women are not equal. We need to tell them what medical procedures they can have. And as far as the, the pill, the, that pill, that two part pill is an actual, um, you know, is an, after, after, um, conception. So that's illegal regardless in Tennessee because abortion, even medical abortion is illegal at any point in Tennessee. But yes, other places are, um, are, are banning it. And then there are other people who take it for other reasons. And that's become an issue and become difficult. So it's just absolutely out, outrageous that a legislature full of a bunch of insurance people and whatever they are have decided their physicians and can legislate medical practice. Right. Um, it's it's ridiculous that we are trying to legislate morality and and legislate what um, medical procedures doctors can and cannot do, and what medical procedure women and children can and cannot have. I mean, we are literally forcing nine year olds who are victims of rapists to carry their rapist baby. That is sick, in my view. And, and we're doing nothing to change it. And in the meantime, we're 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 taking away uh, LGBTQ plus rights and right. and banning drag shows. Uh, of course, now a lawsuit has come out that has put that on hold, which is great news. Mm -hmm. Where do you see LGBTQ plus rights going in the future in our state? <laughs> well, I think you know. I, I talk to a lot of LGBTQ people and say they they feel like they're trying to erase them, and I think that that's absolutely true. And that's why I believe we need to stand up with them and for them as well. 
because we've got a group of folks up here who are running roughshod over every vulnerable community that we have. I mean, we're talking about women, the LGBTQ community, black and brown people. It is just outrageous. The disabled children, it's quite remarkable. They keep saying they want to protect children. They will do nothing about gun violence. Um, and you know what? They want to ban books, but they don't want to ban guns in schools. They want to arm teachers. Mm -hmm. It's outrageously ridiculous. I think and I hope that Tennesseans are starting to see this. And Tennesseans, um, you know, I have a lot of friends. My family, they're all Republicans. They're not okay with this stuff. They don't have a problem with drag queens. They don't have a problem with the LGBTQ community. They don't have a problem with gun sense legislation. Um, the the supermajority, the MAGA Republicans up here are just wrong, and they are listening to the NRA, the American Rifle, Fi the American Firearm Association, um, NFIB, and Americans for Prosperity when it comes to legislation, and they are absolutely not listening to the families in their districts. Yeah, and and that's where it, that's where it comes in. It's time for a change. Yeah. It's time for a change 100%. Yeah. And uh, that leads to my overall question. What's next? Where are we, where, are we, where do we go from here, Representative Johnson? Where, what, what happens now? I think what we do is we broaden the movement. We bring more people in, helping them to understand that, that guns are now the number one killer of our children and that we have to do something. And it's not just in schools. It's in banks and grocery stores and movie theaters and churches, you know. We've got a lot of work to do, but we also have to make sure that we're protecting democracy, that we are keeping our eyes on the folks in the legislature and and what they are doing to democracy and how they are silencing. We've got to hold them accountable. And the hope is that when we go into elections in 2024, people say, you know, we're not putting up with this. We want representatives that represent us not just the wealthy and well-connected. Right. And so we've got to take this to action on gun sense legislation, but we've also got to take it to action when it comes to replacing these people who are absolutely not listening to their constituents. Absolutely. And that's, that's the perfect note to end it on because <laughs> it's the, the future is now the future is coming and there's going to be a time when, when all of this changes and progressivism and, what we what we conclude is right will will succeed. Right. I mean, we want a multiracial, multi generational legislature. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're trying to do that, and they're fighting it, kicking and screaming. They are. It's going to look different because young people are different. They're passionate. They're smart. They're bold, and they they don't take to nonsense. And I think that's great. And we've got to lift up those voices, bring more in, and really make this a representative government. Finally, a generation said, you know what? That's that's not right. We should probably <laughs> do something about that. We should probably- I'm sick and tired of um, yeah. hiding under desks at my school as a drill. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm sick and tired of these old folks destroying our environment and doing nothing to protect it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sick and tired of treating people of color and LGBTQ community, black and brown community, as different and not allowing them human dignity, you know, they're not going to put up with this no. and I'm ready for it. <laughs> it. It's time for the change. It's time for the change. Well, Representative Johnson, I cannot thank you enough for taking time out of your extremely busy schedule to talk to me and, and talk to my listeners. Uh, you are an inspiration. You're doing the work that needs to be done in Nashville right now. And I just, I can't thank you enough for being here and doing everything that you do. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. We've been talking to Representative Gloria Johnson on the Smoking Hot Podcast. <laughs>